What's up, not just developers? Welcome back to another tutorial. Today, it's something exciting. Today, we're gonna build a health application uh, in React Native by integrating our React Native application directly with the health APIs provided by the platform. For example, on iOS, we're gonna work with Health Connect, with HealthKit on iOS, and on Android, we have the Health Connect. So, well, using some libraries, we're gonna get this data in our React Native application and we're gonna build our health application. So what exactly we're gonna build? Well, for this project, uh, I thought that let's go ahead and build something uh, that, um, an application that is really beautiful on iOS. And here I'm talking about the fitness application and I'm gonna focus on the step counter uh, features of this application just to keep this project um, the scope of this project, manageable to do it in one or two hours. So what we're gonna do today, we're gonna start, we're gonna build a step counter. We're gonna do that by, again, by getting data from the health APIs. And uh, the first part, we're gonna dive into the user interface. And here, uh, besides the basic like rendering text and so on and styling and, and other things that you're gonna learn, the most interesting part about the UI of this uh, application is actually this ring. And as you can see, it's an animated ring. So we're gonna do that using SVG, using some animations with React Native reanimated. So I think it's gonna be a fun experience to, uh, to give it a try and build this animated ring uh, for, for, for this application. Don't judge my health data. I've been working a lot this week. So uh, after that, in the next part, in the next step, also in today's video, we're gonna uh, get this data from the API and we're gonna render it here on the screen. So that's the plan for today. Um, if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go ahead and run the intro. Um, while I'm doing that, please let me know in the live chat, where are you joining us from? And um, say something nice. All right, so hi everyone in the chat. How are you doing? Get a treadmill and, st and a standing desk. Hi, uh, Simon. Yeah, I know, uh, I remember you were um, on a treadmill, right? Are you still doing it? I have a standing desk, I'm standing right now, but I don't have a treadmill. But that's something to, to think about. All right, so let's go ahead and get started by initializing an empty project. I'm gonna open a terminal uh, here is the terminal itself. Let's go ahead and open a directory. Okay, we have a lot of, no. All right, let's, let's uh, do it right here. So we're gonna initialize our project using Expo. So for that, all we have to do is in terms of environment, what we have to uh, to have on our system is Node.js and NPM and using NPX create expo up. I also like to add the at latest in order to make sure that uh, we're getting the latest version of uh, the expo CLI. Uh, let's give it the name step counter. And lastly, let's give it a dash T in order to select a template. I'm gonna go with a second one with a blank with TypeScript. Um, the directory step counter has files that might be over step counter prep what? Okay, I already have it. So I'm gonna do it one more time. npx create expo application at latest, give the project name and let's choose the blank with TypeScript. Hello, Tanish. Hello, Chris. Uh, Ankan, Emeka from Ni Nigeria, from Ghana, Argentina, Uganda. Hello, guys, from everywhere. Greeting, uh, greetings from Germany. Hello, Simon. How is your uh, experience with React Native so far?
So let's wait for a couple of seconds for NPM to install everything. I hope my internet is okay. How is the quality, by the way? Okay, okay, okay. We already see some deprecation errors, but the good thing is that our project is ready. So let's go ahead and open it in our uh, editor of choice. I'm gonna open it in Visual Studio Code. Uh, not exactly what I wanted to do, but yeah, like I'm, I'm gonna navigate from here. So I'm gonna open this one, open. Just like that. Let's go ahead and zoom in a bit and let's run our project. So I'm gonna do npm start to start the Metro server. And from here we can press I to run it either on iOS simulator, A to run it on Android simulator, or if you don't have Android and iOS simulators, you can scan this QR code in the ExpoGo application on your physical device and you are good to go. <clears throat> today we're actually, another thing that we're gonna learn today is how to work with native modules, uh, I mean with packages that contain native modules in Expo. So we're gonna pre-build our application. So this is also something that I know that a lot of people are confused. And today we're gonna see how we can do that. <clears throat> so um, the application is loading and in a moment it should be there. Yes, we have it. So what we see is the default text open up app.tsx. And if we open up this app.tsx, this is the entry point in our application. So if for example, we change something here, we will see right away the changes on our uh, emulator on, or on, on the physical device. Okay, so uh, here we have our minimal application and we can, I think, get started and start uh, displaying something on the UI. Uh, let's uh, grab that screenshot. Give me just one second to bring it somewhere here. Should be this one. And let's think what information we're gonna display. Before we uh, jump into this uh, ring that we're gonna display, um, I think we can simply render these steps information from the bottom and the distance. So for that, what we will need is, uh, for example, we're gonna have a text that says steps and below it, we're gonna have a text with the actual steps. For example, 1,219. Uh, then we're gonna also might uh, get some additional information like a distance, distance, and below it, we're gonna display the actual distance. I don't know, 0 0.75 kilometers. Uh, maybe also the flight climbed. I don't know, something like that. Uh, all right. so. Right from the beginning, I don't like that everything is centered in the middle. So let's go ahead and do uh, remove a justify content from here. No, <laughs> the line items. I wanted, uh, it's always the other one that you think you have to, um, to change. So um, let's also add some padding right away to this container just to, to have some spacing around it and Okay, that's already better. Now we want to put this, for example, steps and distance into the same row. So for that, what we're gonna have to do, um, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to put it, I, I was just thinking like what, what like, already about the next steps. We're gonna put the steps and the distance because if we look at the screenshot, I don't know, maybe I should have it somewhere here. 
uh, we see that the um, steps and the distance are in the same row. So if I give some styles to this view, saying that I want flex direction to be row, it will work half of a thing. Like, yes, it will put like all the steps and so on uh, into the same row, but at the same time, like we want the label and the text to be on top of each other. So for that reason, like the, the groups of information that contains the label and the value should be inside a separate container. And if I do that for both of them, like this, so now we can see that this is the first container, this is the second one, and also for the flights climbed as well. Let's put them inside a container like this. Okay, perfect. Let's go ahead and give um, style styles dot label because now like it's really hard to understand what's going on there. And for the value, we're gonna give styles dot value. Now let's go ahead and copy this label and give it to the other two labels that we have for distance and flies climbed and the styles label for the other two values that we have. Okay, we assigned a style, but we don't have any styles yet. So let's go ahead and start with uh, adding the label and the value here. And let's see how do we want to uh, style them. For example, I know that the value should be really, like the font size should be quite large, like I don't know, 40, maybe 35, something like that. Um, I am also gonna give some style to the whole container, to the, to the container that has the label and the value. Styles dot, uh, how to call it, value container. And let's give it to the other views as well, just like this. Now, value container. I need it just to add some spacing for them. So for example, mm, I think what I'm gonna do is add margin, uh, right, I don't know, 20, even more, like, I don't know, 30, 50, something like that. Just move the steps and the distance apart. Uh, okay, now, next step, the label. No, we are not done with the value yet. The value, let's bring the screenshot. Let's bring the screenshot. Um, well, the first step, of course, is gonna be to change the background color. So let's check what background color we have here. Is it, yeah, it's pure black. So I'm gonna start with that. Now the value is gonna have um, is going to have a color. <laughs> That's how you take specifically the colors that you're interested in. All right. And for the label, I think it should be just white. Like that. Um, now the values. Let's increase the font weight to 500, yep, yeah, looks better. And for the label, let's increase a bit the font size to something like 20, yep, yeah, that's better. And I think I'm pretty good with it. Maybe for the value container, we can add some margin vertical, 10 or even 20. 10 is was okay to add spacing, um, vertical spacing between the, the, these ones. And now we have these uh, containers. The thing is that, okay, here, let me go ahead and explain a bit how we can improve this code um, a bit. You see that always we, we had to copy paste basically the structure of this digit com component over and over to have like displayed three times. 
But basically the structure is the same, the only difference is the label and the value. So these are a perfect example of how we can extract it into a separate component. To do that, let's go ahead and do uh, define a, a component by creating a function here. The name is going to be, um, I don't know, <laughs> give me a name, give me a name, <laughs> value, uh, what, what are these? These are statistics or stats or something like that. Uh, it's so bad, I'm gonna go with value. And inside this, I don't even need like curly brackets, I need just open brackets. And let's go ahead and copy the, um, the code of one of these value container. So if I'm gonna copy it from here, put it here. Uh, and if instead of rendering them like this, I'm gonna simply render them like value, another value, and outside that view, another value. We're gonna see steps, 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 steps. So we created this separa uh, separate component successfully, but at the same time, like the data remained static. What we want to do is we actually want to send uh, the data. For example, for the first one, we want the label to be steps, I'm looking here, like steps, and the value to be this one. Like this. For the second one, I want the label to be distance, and the value to be, let's do value also as a string, because here with kilometers and so on, like it's gonna be easier. And if it's a string, like you can, do it like this. And lastly, here, we're gonna also do label. The label is gonna be this flight climbed and the value is going to be, I don't know how many, zero, 12, okay. So in this scenario, we are sending a property a dynamic property to our value component with a name label and another one with a name, the actual value. The next step is to receive these properties here inside this component and to dynamically render them instead of this dummy, dummy data. So to do that, we're gonna um, right away destructure these properties by their name, for example, label and value and let's render them here inside curly brackets, like label, and the second one is value. Now, all of three are rendering different um, values and labels based on the data that we are sending, and we can safely remove the comments from here, and now we have a much easier to understand component, like it's simply value. Uh, so let's see if anyone has a better idea. Someone is recommending value component. I don't really like to put the word component in, into a component, but maybe that would be better. Now, um, in order to properly type, because we decided to use TypeScript for this application, we need to specify like what is, uh, what is the type of properties that this component expects. So for that, we're gonna uh, define a value props. Let's say that it has two things, the label, which should be a string, and the value, which should be also a string. And let's type this object that we are destructuring from. We're gonna type it with double dots value props. And now uh, TypeScript will know that this label is a string and this value is also a string. Okay, perfect. So what we have right now, I'm gonna go ahead and do git add, git commit, render, um, 
text statistics. I don't know, something like that. Okay, we are uh, we're good so far. Oh, why didn't I use the gap introduced in 71? Because I always forget about it. So someone is recommending me instead of adding this margin right, which is not the best way, what we actually could do, mm, is we're gonna remove this margin right, everything is gonna be close together, and we can add a flex gap, or just gap, what is the value, 25, and this adds the gap here. And the gap is actually much more valuable than this. It just doesn't just add like margin on the right and the left. It really is very well when we have like these types of grid views. So what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna probably move this value also in this container like this. They will all be displayed one uh, like, like this <laughs> in the same row. Let me go ahead and get this, extract these styles into the style sheet. So I'm gonna have, uh, values and these values will contain this flex direction and the gap. So let's give styles.values like this. Now for the value container, what I can do is I can say that the minimum width should be 50%. And uh, this, of course, made it look okay because the minimum width of our value container is 50%, but it pushed the third component outside. So in order to make sure that it doesn't push outside of a screen, but it actually goes from a new line, for the container that we have here, we can specify how do we want to wrap using flex wrap, wrap. And in this way, it put it from the new line. I think 50 is too much. I'm not sure like what exactly, what value exactly I need here, but 40 is gonna be enough because you cannot fit three elements, three 40% inside 100%. So yeah, 40 will work for now. Should it be, what if, what if the gap is bigger? What if the gap is 55? Yeah, that's better. Yeah, I don't need this minimum width because in my case with a 25 gap, like the thing is that it was okay. Like all of these values fit on, fit on the screen. Maybe if we would increase the font size to, I don't know, 45 here, in that case it wouldn't fit and it will automatically go from a new line. If the gap between these two are, is too big, I don't even need the margin vertical, guys, because the margin vertical is handled by the gap. And in this case, I don't even need the value container because I don't provide any styles here. So I can remove completely the styles for the value container because the, uh, the um, space between the elements, both horizontally between them and vertically be between the items is handled by this gap. And the cool thing is that this gap will be 25 pixels both horizontally and vertically, but you can adjust how much uh, row gap, for example, you want. If you want a bigger row gap, like a 50, you can add that and it will add more, much more row gap. And there is also column gap like this. So I think I'm gonna leave it just like gap. And this is a small tutorial on flex gap with React Native. So let me do git stuff. But again, like if we look at the changes, I think it's much more, it's way better this way. Where is it? This one. Why do I have so many? Um, so yeah, I'm gonna zoom out a bit. 
So yeah, I think it's much better this way. Like we we reduced a, a lot of things. Like we didn't we removed a whole values container. Yeah. So let's go ahead, git add, git commit. Perfect. And uh, you said the saying in large, uh, I'm not sure like where the conversation started, but I see the last message that in large devices like a tablet, in this case, they will be in the same row, I think. Yes, exactly. Even like with this device, like if I will switch to uh, to horizontal, I'm not sure like if the application has now um, default orientation. Does it have a landscape? So if I'm gonna do landscape, they will fit in the same line and they will be displayed in the same line. So this is much more, um, much better in terms of responsiveness because on different screens, like it will adjust accordingly. What's going on there? Okay, perfect. Okay, so let's go ahead and start the next part, the next comp component, which is going to be this interesting animated ring that we see here on the display. That's gonna be a challenge for me as well because I haven't worked that much with, um, with SVGs. So it's gonna be a learning process for me as well. So before we begin, let's go ahead and create a separate directory for our components because the rule of thumb is that we have only one component per file and in, at the moment we already have two of them, the application and the value. And now we're gonna have to create the third one so it's gonna be uh, get out of the hands here. So let's go ahead and create the SRC folder where we will create a new folder called components. That's how I usually structure my uh, projects, the, all the source code is in the SRC, and here I have components, screens, and other folders uh, that I need. So inside the components, let's go ahead and create a new file. Should we extract the value first? Yeah, let's do that, value.tsx. This is going to be the component that we already defined here in app.tsx. Let's go ahead and extract it by copying the type and the component itself. I'm gonna cut it from here and move it to the value. Uh, I'm also like to copy all the imports from the previous container and only delete the ones that I don't need. For example, status bar and uh, no, style sheet I will need. So for the style sheet, I need to bring in the styles from here. Let's bring the styles. Uh, let's leave only the styles for the label and the value. So label and value. I'm gonna remove the container and values from here. And you should do the same in the app.tsx. We need to leave only the container and values and remove the styles for the label and value because we move them to their own com component. The last step in this value.tsx component is to export this value, uh, this value component by doing export default value at the end of a file and the last step is in app.tsx, we can go ahead and do import value from source components value. And just like that, we have everything back working, but our app.tsx is a much cleaner, um, has a much cleaner code right now, and we have separated everything in different components. Um, I'm gonna do one more commit just for you to have um, all the steps. Extract value to a separate component. And as I said, the next step is going to be 
to render our ring. Let's simply start by creating a component for it. Uh, let's go ahead and create a new file. Um, ring progress .tsx. Here, let's go ahead and define a basic component that at the moment will simply render a text. I don't think we will see the text, but if I give here color white, and if we import this ring progress inside our app TSX, import ring progress from source components, and where do we want to render it? Well, I don't need this hello world at all. Uh, and I think we will render it just here as the first component inside our container, ring progress like that. Yes, it is there. Maybe you don't see it, but if I do it red, it's right here, ring progress. Okay, okay. Um, with what do we start? Um, first of all, let's simply um, size this view depending of the, of one property that we're gonna receive. So, before we get started, let's define the types of the properties for the ring progress props. And one of the properties that we're gonna receive is going to be radius. So radius is going to be a number that will specify how large do we want this ring to be. So let's grab this radius here. Let's type our properties with ring properties. And for our view, let's style it saying that the width should be, well, if radius, like the radius is half of a circle. So we need the width of a whole container to be radius multiplied by two and the height of a container to be also radius multiplied by two. Uh, and if we provide a background color red, we see that we didn't provide any radius. Because this radius, let's make it optional and let's initialize it with a default value of, let's say, 50. So if the parent component does not give anything, does not give any radius, we're gonna initialize it with 50, maybe 100. Yeah, that's better. So now, what do we have? Background color red. I think I uh, have somewhere the, 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 the color that Apple is using. So let me do here const color is equal to this one EE0F55. I'm gonna zoom in a bit for everyone to see. So I'm gonna provide it as a background color. Okay, it's already better. Maybe we can uh, align self center. What will that look? Yeah, it will put the item in the center. I'm not sure what happened with duplicated views, but if I refresh, everything is okay. Okay, so we are, uh, we have started and we at the moment, what we're doing is simply rendering a view, a container, with the right size is based on the radius of a circle that we want to render. And the next step is going to be to actually render that circle. For that, what we're gonna use is, we're gonna use React Native SVG. So let's go ahead and open the documentation of that. I'm gonna open it in Expo, but this is a, React Native SVG is a proper is a is a separate library. It's not coming from Expo. It's coming from Software Mansion. So probably I'm gonna open that as well. React Native SVG. So here it is. This is the library, and in the Expo documentation we just see a couple of examples of how we can use it. So to begin with, let's go ahead and uh, install React Native SVG. 
inside our project. React Native SVG has some native code, but the cool thing is that Expo Go application contains this native code. So we don't have to do to, to pre-build, we don't have to do anything extra to, to work with the SVG here. We just install it and we are ready to go. Let's go ahead and, um, I know, grab this example because I think it's a good starting point for this SVG. So I'm gonna copy the import statement or should we do everything? Yeah, let's do everything ourselves. For example, uh, in order to render an SVG, of course, we're gonna have to import SVG from React Native SVG. So uh, we're also gonna need a circle. So let's right away import the circle from React Native SVG. And let's go ahead in our inside our component where we have a view and start rendering the SVG. Everything starts with the SVG component, SVG. So let's render that one. And inside this, we can render different SVG components, for example, the circle. So I'm gonna start with rendering the circle. And what properties does this circle expect? Well, one of them is the R, which represents the radi radius. So let's give it actually our radius from here. And if I do fill with our color, and if I will remove the background color from our view itself, maybe I can do here, maybe I can do here for the background color, I don't know, opacity 0 0.1, just to, to understand the, uh, what are the limits. And I don't see it, why? Okay, never mind. I'm gonna simply remove the background color from our view itself. Can you fit in the same line? Yes, you can. Maybe like this. Please fit. I don't want to, ext yeah, that's better. <clears throat> okay, so we see something is happening there. I'm not sure why radius, is this actually radius multiplied by two? If I do, maybe, maybe. But the thing is that the center of a circle at the moment is position 0, 0.0. So that's why we see only a quarter of a, a circle because the rest is not visible because of the sizes of this view. So what we want to do is we want to move the center, center X and center Y in the middle of our container. So if the width of a container is radius multiplied by two, the center of our container basically is going to be radius and the same with the Y. And just like that, we move the center of a circle in the center of our view, and now we see the full circle. Perfect, that's already better. Mm, the next step, the next step. I'm gonna move this fill color to probably... Mm, yeah, let's, let's, let's think about the next steps. The thing is that our component here is not an actual circle, it's a ring, right? It's a donut. So we can accomplish this by working not with the circle itself, but by working with the stroke of a circle, the outline of it. So for example, if I give here stroke, uh, stroke width, of 10 and the stroke uh, with color, I will have to move away this fill color to 
I will, I will actually remove it at all. And we're gonna be left only with our stroke. Uh, let's go ahead and add the width of the stroke as a pr property as well. So, um, width or stroke width. Also optional and we're gonna use um, default value. Let's take it from here and let's save it with default value. It's gonna be, I don't know, 20. And instead of this 10, let's use the stroke width. As you can see, we have that stroke width. Everything is fine. Well, almost, almost everything is fine, right? Because the thing is that the stroke is added outside of a circle. And because uh, without this, like if I do fill here blue, and if I don't have a stroke at all, and if I add background color red to our container, we see that the circle is touching the borders. Basically it takes the same amount of space as our uh, box here. And if we add a stroke width and a stroke color, um, maybe that one not red, but I don't know, um, green. We can see that this stroke is actually, actually I was thinking that it's going only outside, but it's, it's actually half outside and half inside. It's basically growing in both directions. So if I'm gonna do a stroke width of, I don't know, 30, we can increase and understand how it grows. You see, it grows in both directions. Like this. So, what does that mean for us? That means that we're gonna have to calculate the, to increase a bit the size of our container to take into the consideration the stroke. So now I'm thinking, um, should we consider this radius, the radius of a, of the whole circle and then calculate the inner radius by uh, by subtracting the, from the radius, by subtracting our stroke width divided by two, because we know that the, the, the stroke is taking, is growing in both directions, so we only need to um, subtract two. And this inner radius can be used for the circle and the radius as well. Something is not right. Minus. Oh, and the center, the center actually should be, uh, yeah, the center should actually remain the radius. Like, why did I change that? Okay, perfect. So the center is the radius. The radius of a circle is the inner radius because the blue part is our circle and the stroke is perfectly aligned with our box. Okay, I'm gonna comment out this green. Maybe we're gonna need it later when debugging because it's much easier to understand like what we have to work with. Um, should we add padding to the circle? You mean to, to not touch this one? Yeah, maybe, maybe. Mm, I would rather do it for the values. I will do margin, vertical 20. Yeah, let's do something like that. Not the big, not the most important part right now. Okay, so. Hmm, <clears throat> look what we have right now. We basically have this donut uh, there. The next step is let's make this donut the background. To do that, we're gonna simply send some opacity here. And if I do 0 0.1, that's gonna be something like the background here. 
maybe 0.2 will look better. For the foreground, let's copy paste this circle and remove the opacity. And that's perfect, but the second circle just takes the whole space. And this would be okay if we have like 100% uh, progress. But if we don't have 100% progress, we need to render maybe half of a circle or one quarter of a circle for the second one. I'm gonna add maybe some comments here, background, and here is going to be our foreground. So the trick that we're gonna use to make this circle basically feel or not is something called stroke dash array. And here, if we provide stroke dash array of, I don't know, five, that's going to add uh, the, uh, a dash, um, a dashed type stroke where the width of the field parts is five pixels. If I increase this to 50, you're gonna see that it looks like 50% is filled, 50% not. 50% is filled, 50% not. That's if you send one value. However, if you send two values, the first one is used for the amount of, the, of field part, and the second value is going to be the amount of empty part. So if I do here five, we're gonna see that the empty part is much smaller than the field part. So, what, what we can do is we can give here, uh, well, first of all, we basically need to understand what is the circumference of the whole circle. Because we're gonna use that value in order to play around with our dash array here. From math, I think that's the only, um, That's the only thing, but that, that's the only uh, uh, formula that I remember for, for, from math. The circumference of a circle is uh, 2 pr. So 2 multiplied by math dot pi multiplied by the radius. And which one? Is it inner radius? Maybe. I don't know. So now if I'm going to give circumference here, that's gonna be filled. If I'm gonna give circumference minus five, that should open up here on the right five pixels. And that's telling me that the value is true because if it weren't, we wouldn't see that opening. For example, if I do minus one, it's just one pixel opening there. So this idea with stroke dash array, I have to give credits. I took it from Catalin Miron. Uh, I was looking at his tutorial with, how's it called? Uh, don't remember how it, how is the name. But basically, um, yeah, that's where I got the idea from. So shout out to Catalin. The only thing that I, uh, I, I'm doing it differently is that I'm only playing with this stroke dash array by, by, by playing with these two values, like how much is filled and how much is not filled, I can adjust like how much uh, do we want to see there. For example, if I'm gonna multiply this circumference with uh, 0 0.5 and then non-filled, if I'm gonna do, let's do it full circumference because we don't really care how much is not filled there because we don't see it, right? Like if it's, Mm. Yeah, like basically it takes the rest of the space and even more. So if circumference is zero multiplied by 0 0.5, we see half of a circle. If it's 0 0.2, we see 20%. If it's one, we see full, full circle. So that's how we're gonna control um, how much do we want to display here. Um, I want to... Yeah, there is another property stroke line cap 
that can do where you can specify how do you want the the ends of our stroke to look so i put round and as you can see it's already round here i think i'm gonna increase the stroke width to 30 even 40 maybe maybe 35 yeah so this looks much better without it it was just simply square round perfect um now a lot of these types of ring progress they start actually from the top so in order to start from the top, what I can do is I can rotate this circle uh, minus 90 degree and that will move it to the top. The problem is that the rotation uses the position 0.0, .0 as the uh, origin of rotation. So m moving it minus 90 degrees, like it moved to like r really a lot. Not a lot, but uh, around the different axes that we want. We actually want to move uh, using origin based on this radius and origin. Origin Y, also radius. So now when moving, like it moves around the center of our circle. I can move this probably here at the top. Maybe radius is the first one. Yeah. Okay, what's next? What's next? Um, I think we are ready with a design of this component and the next step is just going to be to animate it starting from zero all the way to the value that we actually want to animate and the value that we want to animate to that's going to be a property that we will definitely send and this is going to be progress so progress is going to be a value let's do it not optional let's do it actually required and let's take the progress so if we go to the app.tsx, we will see that a red warning here that we're not sending the actual progress to our ring progress. So let's go ahead and send progress here to, I don't know, 0 0.25. And the progress is going to be a value from zero to one representing the percentages, like how much um, do we want to fill this circle. So now b with this progress that we have in the ring progress, we can replace this value. So circumference multiplied by progress. And now from app.tsx, if we're gonna run and we're gonna go to 30, it's gonna go to 30, then 35, then 56 and so on until you get to one. So yeah, the next step is going to be to animate this value, not to be that boring, right? Can you save this live place? Yes, it's gonna be saved. Someone is saying, yeah, the next step is going to be uh, animation, but before that, let me quickly look through the chats because your guys having some interesting discussions. Um, I think someone said, uh, that I have to re-upload the live streams as videos. The usual person doesn't know how to click on the live streams tab in on your channel. So it looks like your channel is empty. That's such a big problem. Like, I don't know, like um, YouTube updated and nowadays, yeah, like the, the videos are split among different tabs. And when you go to the videos, like basically I don't do any videos. I almost do only live streams. And yeah, that's a problem. We'll see. Reducing opacity of parent view will reduce the child's opacity too. Yeah, that's why when I had opacity V here, yeah, thank you. 
Which theme are you using VS Code? I have a video on the channel. Can you open again the four day masterclass? Yeah, by the way, guys, if you are interested in learning and becoming a better developer, we have a free masterclass, uh, a free four day masterclass where you will build a full stack Facebook or a social media application like Facebook, um, both on the front end and on the back end. So if you are interested, the link should be in the description below. Give it a try and um, yeah, you're gonna have four days to, to complete it. And uh, let me know like if uh, you don't have any more access, ping me after the, the live stream and I'm gonna try to give you access for a longer period of time. But this masterclass is part of uh, our premium academy. So if you're gonna be a student uh, at the academy.notjust.dev, you're gonna have full access to our co premium course and including this masterclass as well for unlimited period of time. So if you're interested in that, uh, we, we should also have a links in the description so you can check out our academy where you can become a real full stack mobile developer. Make shorts from these live sessions. Shorts I definitely cannot do from live sessions because I really like to go in depth and to make sure that I explain it properly and not just like, hey, let's do use these properties, let's put it this way and it will work. Like I really want to make sure that you basically know like why we have two here and why, why we have divided by two here. It's not just some magic numbers, I want you to understand. So for that reason, like it's hard to do shorts out of these things. But separate videos maybe we can do. For example, the, the ring animations maybe can be a separate video. But the next step, yeah, let's go ahead and actually animate this thing. So in order to animate, we're gonna use, uh, yeah, give me just one second to do git add. Okay, perfect. So in order to animate it, we're gonna use reanimated, the reanimated library. Come on, React Native, reanimated. Here is the documentation. We can also open up the documentation from Expo about reanimated. It just shows us how to install it and maybe some examples. So from here as well, like reanimated is part of the Expo Go, so at this moment we don't have to pre-build or do anything extra here, except installing uh, the, the React Native reanimated library inside our project. So let's copy the install command. It's basically npx expo install React Native reanimated. Um, there should, we should also add a line in babel.config, but I think that it will automatically be added. So let's check that one. Uh, no, it's actually not added. So let's go ahead and take these plugins, line from the documentation and add it in babel.config after the presets. After that is done, we should uh, stop our server and start it again by specifying dash dash space dash dash clear. A lot of dashes. <laughs> and let's go ahead and close our application and run it again. Okay, everything is running, uh, that's good. What we have to do is, let's go back to our ring progress here and we're gonna animate it. Let me see if this stroke dash array, stroke. 
Yeah, no, okay. So, our goal is to animate this circle. In order to animate uh, a component that is not a default component that we can import, basically we're gonna have to import animated, not from React Native, but for React Native reanimated. Um, so in order to uh, animate some components like text or views, like you can import them from here, like animated, like view and so on. But the thing is that, um, yeah, animated, I think, I think it's, it's here as well. So, um, The thing is that the component that we want to animate, this circle component, this component is not a default component. It's a custom component. The cool thing is that we can easily use the animated to make animated components. Let's call it animated circle. And we're gonna do that by calling animated.create. Mm, that should be imported not by destructuring, but directly. So create animated component and here we specify which component. We want to make this SVG circle an animated component. Now let's replace our foreground circle to an animated circle. Now this component is ready to be animated. There are a couple of ways we can animate them using for example use animated styles um, but the thing is that at this, in this case, we actually don't want to animate the styles of these animated circles. In fact, we don't even have styles. In a lot of cases, like you're gonna work with animated directly with styles. But here, what we want to animate, like basically the value that will change is this stroke dash array. Because this is where we will want to, to change from 0.2, and so on until we get um, to the value that we want to, to get. And this, this stroke dash array, this is a property. So with reanimated, we can use a hook called use animated props to provide animated properties that will change over time. So let's define here animated props equal use animated props. And this one expects a function that will return an object. As you can see here, I'm returning the object right away. Make sure you have this brackets because otherwise it will think that it's the body of a function. You want to have this um, round brackets and then the object. And here we need to specify exactly what fields do we want to animate. So for example, I'm gonna copy paste this stroke dash array from here to our animated props. Uh, it shouldn't be equal, it should be double dots because this is an object and as well, like we should remove this object, like it should be an array. Strike dash array is an array with these values. At the moment, our component is back to being filled because we removed this property from here. But if we're gonna assign the animated props to the animated circle, animated props equal animated props. We're gonna be back to where we started. But the cool thing is that now this stroke, stroke dash array is an animated property. And in the next step, we're gonna be able to play with it in order to make it actually go from zero to all the way to the value that we have to. We have to. Um, in reanimated, we have uh, we need some values that will drive basically our animation. Something like um, animation progress that will over time increase and will uh, specify like the, the, that will drive basically the animation. These values are called share values. So use shared value. And um, they live on them, like 
if we talk like technically about them, like they live on the UI thread and that's why it's so much more performant for the animations. It doesn't block it. So let's define the amount of the circle that should be filled is going to be a shared value equal to zero. So the amount of circle that should be filled is a shared value. So now the stroke dash array is not gonna depend on the progress, but it's going to depend on the amount of fill and it should be fill dot value. So now it's there, but if I change here to 0 0.5, For a step, it does that, but then it comes back. Hmm, what's the problem there? Oh no, actually it works, 0 0.6, yes. So uh, now this fill value will drive our animation. So initially it starts at zero and based on some events, it should go all the way to the basically progress that we want here. So when do we want this animation to, to happen? We want this animation to happen basically every time our progress changes or the first time that the components mounts. So for that, we need a use effect. Let's add the progress as a dependency because every time the progress changes, we want to animate our fill value to the new destination, to the new basically value. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the fill value here to say like, how much do we want to fill here? So if I go do progress directly, it's gonna automatically go there. So if I open app.tsx, this is actually not animated at the moment. It jumps, right? But it's ready to be animated. Like if I change here, everything jumps. Now, if instead of when the progress changes, if instead of right away changing the field value to the progress value, if instead of that, we're gonna do it over a small period of time, basically, instead of saying like, hey, field value should be progress, Instead of that, if we say, hey, fill value should go towards the progress for the next like one or two seconds. To do that, we have timing animations. So let's import the with timing from React Native Animated. And here, when we change the value of the fill of this ring, if we don't say go to the progress, but we say with timing, go to the progress, then we're gonna have an animated value. So if from app.tsx I'm gonna do one, you're gonna see that it now doesn't jump, but it smoothly goes to that position that we specify. And if you also provide to this with timing, some options like duration, and if you say like, I know three seconds, in that situation, the animation will be, oh, not three, but 3,000 because it's milliseconds. So 3,000. So if we go to zero, it slowly goes to zero. If we go to one, it slowly goes to one. Maybe three seconds is too much, like half of it is going to be enough, like zero. Perfect. Besides the width timing, there are other types of um, drivers for animator, for animation. For example, a whiff spring will work uh, better to emulate how things are moving in the real world. So if I'm gonna do whiff spring here, the thing is that whiff spring doesn't have a duration. It's much more complicated to, to work with a whiff spring. But now if I'm gonna do one or zero, oh, it's weird, it's weird, yeah. I'm not gonna do that. Maybe, if I'm gonna do 0 0.5, do 
don't really see the, the spring there. But the with spring, you would usually um, adjust using, let's go ahead and see animations. The damping, like you're gonna basically play with these values. I don't have a lot of experience with this one. So what I know that the problem that we saw there when we went to zero from one to zero, the problem that you saw there that it was flashing, it was because it was overshooting. So if we, if we say that it don't go overboard, like don't go below zero and don't go above like one, in that case, it's gonna work better. But I don't see them. Who knows, the spring, how should we make it look better here with properties like mass? I don't know. The default mass is one if we do 10. Don't really like it. Like I, I don't see, I don't see a change. So I'm gonna simply go ahead and move back to the with timing. That was perfectly fine for me. And with a duration of 1.5 seconds. If I go to zero, slowly goes there. Perfect. So that's how we have this animation. And every time we're gonna refresh the application, the value to the progress, like if you have, I don't know, 0.8 progress, you're not gonna see it right away. But every time you refresh or open this screen, it will slowly animate there. So this is cool, like that's exactly what you see like in the application of, the, um, of Apple Fitness. When you open it, it starts moving, but it will also work whenever the progress changes. So basically if you keep walking and you're gonna change the progress, it's gonna animate towards that value. So that's the animation. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me do git add, git commit. If anyone has uh, some ideas, feel free to, to let me know. Maybe this field blue we can already background green, we don't need them anymore. And you know what I was thinking? To make them, the things a bit, but no, they are, but yeah. There are a lot of values that, um, that are the same basically for the first circle, circle and the second circle. So one way would be to, um, I don't know, circle default props, to put all of them into a object and let's say that we have radius, we have a center, we have the origin, which can be the same for both of them. We have a stroke width, we have a color, and maybe even the stroke line cap. We can put it here. Oh, it's gonna be, yeah, like we're gonna have to transform it to an object like this. This is just some refactoring. It should be like this. And now if I'm going to Uh, destructure this object with default props here. T 
TypeScript is not very happy with that because it needs circle props. We need to type like back in our ring progress, these circle default props, they should be typed with circle props imported from React Native SVG. And this way, yeah, everything is back to normal. And these default props can be replaced for the first circle, except the opacity, because the opacity is what differentiates the background from the foreground. And now I think it looks much uh, better. So if it's 0 0.5, yeah, now our code for the background and the front, front ground circle like looks much better. We reused a lot of properties that are shared amongst them and we left only the properties that are different. For example, opacity for the background, rotation for the foreground. I think even rotation can be moved there, you know, because it will not affect the background if it's rotated or not. Yeah, like that. And now the animated circle is even like in one single line. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> awesome. Are you gonna use the API for dynamic values? Yes, that's our next step. So far we are just uh, working with UI and I think we are finished with the UI. Actually, the only thing that is left if we look at the screenshot uh, of this ring is the, uh, the icon the arrow icon. So that's super simple. We just open expo vector icons. Come on. And let's search here arrow. And which one do we choose? I'm gonna be okay with the ant design one. So let's import it in our ring progress. And let's render it like this inside our view. I think it should go after the SVG because we want to display it on top of it. So if it's gonna be, let's change it to red just to see it. Not, not, um, yeah, we already see it. Um, let's give some styles to this icon because we want to position it just in the middle on the top. So for the styles, I think we're gonna work with a position absolute. That's gonna put it on the top. Uh, and let's, will, will this work center? Yeah, align self center, we'll put it in the center. And we just need to add some top 10 or something like that to move it a bit down, like top eight even five. It will depend on how mu how large is the, um, is the ring progress because if we here, we're gonna do radius of 200 or 150 and the stroke width of 50. In that case, it should look a bit different. So maybe the size should even be more like 25 well, not 25, but 35. It should be, the color should be black and play around with this top. There is a way to actually make it dynamic, you know, um, both in terms of size and the style, depending on the, on the radius or on the, depending on the, depending on the um, stroke width. So stroke width is 35. Let's use stroke width here. In our app, it's 50. So let's let's use a stroke, <laughs> um, stroke width multiply by like, let's do 80% of a stroke width. If, if we want to make it dynamic to um, the size and the position. So for the top, Th 
for the top if it's zero for the top oh let's think let's think uh, if it's gonna be one here it's perfectly centered if it's 0 0.8 that means that there is 0 0.2 space available which should be on the top on the bottom that means that it should be stroke width multiplied by 0 0.1 only on the top yes and now if I'm gonna increase the stroke width to I don't know 60 that's gonna increase them 70 and it will always stay in the center 90 yeah 10 it will be very small so perfect I like it it's uh, uh, it was quite easy to make it dynamic based on the stroke width So let's do git add. Arrow on the ring. So if it's gonna be z progress zero, it's gonna look okay. Yeah, it's <laughs> perfect. <laughs> I love it when everything is aligned perfectly, everything is dynamic, oh my God. Okay, how do you like it so far, guys? Are you using CLI or Expo CLI? I'm using Expo. Um, and in the next steps, I'm gonna show you how we can work with any kind of libraries inside Expo. So, our UI is ready. Now what we have to do is, we have to basically take all of these values like steps and distance and so on, dynamically from the, uh, from the API provided by the platform, by the iOS platform. And in this case, that API is called HealthKit. So the library that we're gonna use is React Native Health. And this library, uh, the problem with this library is that there is no cross-platform library um, as far as I know, or as far as I did the research. Um, there is a library, React Native Health, which integrates with the Apple Health Kit. And there is the library, React Native Health Connect, this one, that integrates with a Health Connect for Android. So what we can do is basically we can either target only one platform like iOS using the React Native Health or target Android by using that one, or we can also use both of them and depending on the platform that we are running to source our information from different parts. So, so, so let's go ahead and, and do what? Let's start uh, with the React Native Health, which is going to allow us to integrate with Apple Kit, a Apple Health Kit. This is for iOS only. Um, at the end of the video, we're gonna try to also integrate with the React Native Health Connect. Uh, but the first step is let's go ahead and do it with Apple. Uh, true, true, true. What do we have to do? Well, as you can see, the installation documentation here is specifically for uh, React Native because this package has custom native code that is not included in the Expo Go application. That's why when installing the other libraries like the React Native SVG and the React Native Reanimated, I was saying that we're lucky that these libraries are included in the Expo Go so at that moment, we didn't have to do anything. Just install, run, and it will work in Expo Go. Now we're going into a library that has native code, but this uh, native code is not included in Expo Go. That's the case with a lot of libraries because Expo Go cannot include all the libraries out there. Uh, imagine the size of, of, a, of a client. But the cool thing is that a couple of years ago, if you get into this situation, 
you were kind of a stuck, kind of stuck, and the only solution was to eject and continue using React Native CLI. Nowadays, um, there might be also this confusion about the eject. Nowadays, there is no eject. There is no need to eject, and there, there is actually no eject command. Nowadays, we can still continue using Expo when we have to work with uh, packages that need native code. All we have to do is pre-build our application, create a custom development client, and a development client is basically, let's build our custom Expo Go application that contains exactly the native code that our application needs. In that case, it's gonna even be smaller in size. And let's run our application there. So it might sound uh, complicated and technical, but it's quite easy to do that. So, uh, let's go ahead and install it step-by-step, step, everything that we will need. Let's not forget to share the screen. We're gonna st uh, start by installing npx expo install the react, let me clear. So let's start by installing the library that we need. For example, npm expo install react native health. If we install it like this, everything is good. Uh, I think from the documentation we should also We should also add a plugin. So let's add the React Native Health plugin inside our plugins in our app.json. So let's open up app.json and this is what powers the new architecture and the new way of why it's possible to run uh, custom uh, native code in Expo. It's because of the, uh, of the plugins. So it was added automatically actually. And this is instructing like, hey, there is some uh, a package with some native code that you need to install. And it's also like from the React Native Health side because they created that plugin that specifies like, okay, what configuration should be changed in on the native side, like Android manifest, info, info and so on. Uh, if we would go ahead and import it here in our application, import, how is it called? Uh, Apple So how do we import it? Apple Health Kit. If we're gonna do that, I think we're gonna get an error. Maybe not at the moment, but if for example we would do Apple Apple Health Kit dot let's call something from here. I'm just gonna need a, a function to, to show an error that, uh, that it will say. Let's do init. Oh, it should be imported by default, like this, not destructured. So now let's try to call a basically a function from this Apple health kit, like init health kit. If we're gonna do that, we're gonna see undefined is not a function because the problem is that we are installing a package with native code that we are trying to run inside Expo Go. If you look, we are still using Expo Go. Expo Go does not have all the native code <laughs> that you would might need, but that's not a problem because what we can do is we can pre-build our application uh, we can run npm expo pre-build and this will create the iOS folder. I'm gonna specify the platform iOS and we're gonna be asked what bundle identifier do we want to create or do we want our application to have. I'm gonna press enter because I like the, the default one and we see the, the steps that it goes through. It created the native project and if we look in our application, we have iOS directory with a native project that we can open in Xcode. 
But it's the same for Android. Like it will create the Android folder that you can open in Android Studio. It uh, updated some of the files like package.json and so on to make this uh, possible. And that's it, it's ready. The next step is, the next step that we can do is let's go ahead and run the server with npx expo start and dash dash dev client. Actually, I think it's time like from this moment, we're gonna use the dev client because we have some native code that is available only in dev client. So why not go ahead and in package.json in the start, it's already dev client. Oh my God, like we do a lot of stuff. So we can continue doing npm start and it will automatically <laughs> do the dev client there. So from here, let's press I to open an iOS simulator and we see that no development build for this project is installed. Make sure to install. I think I forgot to actually install it there. To install the development build that we just created, what we, can, what we should do is npm run iOS and it will execute expo run iOS, yes. So now uh, our iOS project is being built and it will run, but at this time it's not gonna be inside the Expo Go. It's gonna be as a standalone application. So yeah, it takes a bit of time for everything to be compiled, but this like you will need to do this, you will need to do these builds only when you change the only when you install some libraries that has native code. And as you can see, we already have open in step counter. If I do open, you'll see that this is a separate application. This is not Expo Go. This is a separate application. And the error right now is different because I was calling this init health with zero arguments when it expects two of them. So maybe I can call something else like is available. And if we don't see any errors, that means that everything is working fine. Yes, it's running and it contains code for the Apple Health Kit package. Uh, two, two, two. What I want to do now, for example, if I do M to toggle the dev menu, nothing happens. So at this moment, we lost some of the functionalities of Expo Go like the development menu. For example, if we go back to uh, dev, uh, Expo Dev, Expo Go, here we can have this development menu that can uh, help us, mm, come on, go home, that basically can help us, I cannot show you, but you, you understand the point. Like there is the dev menu that helps us uh, inspect and debug our application properly. In the application that was built, it doesn't contain this dev client. But what we can do is we can install this dev client. We can do that easily by doing npx, npx expo install expo dev client. And this one is the part that builds a custom version of the expo go a custom dev client for our application. It's only gonna be available in development because when you build this application for production, the dev client is gone, it's not there. So we have created that 
And in order to, to have it in our application, we will have to uh, basically build the application again. Remember the first time we went through the pre-build and then we did the npm run iOS. I showed you that with two commands just to, for you to understand that there is this pre-build that creates the iOS folder and there is this npm run iOS that builds and uh, deploys and runs the application. However, if we do simply call npm run iOS, which is in fact this expo run iOS, this will automatically pre-build the project if it's not already pre-built. So now we simply do npm run iOS. It will install the new package that we added, export dev client, and we're gonna be good to go. Is it possible to run it in Expo Go in the current state? Very good question. Yes, it is possible to run it in Expo Go still. The only thing is that you're not gonna have access to those native modules that Expo Go doesn't have. So for example, if you need that dev client only for a specific page of application, for example, only for, for, for yeah, like the camera, let, let's say like you're building something with camera and you need the native modules only for that, you'd be able to run it in Expo Go still without going to that screen and it will work perfectly. To do that, do Expo start without this dash dash dev client and then it will open it. And, uh, uh, so now what we can do is press command D or M here in our terminal and it will open our dev client for our step counter application. Again, this is not Expo Go, this is step counter application. And from here, we can do all of the things that we are used to do in our application. And like if you run it on your physical device, you'll be able to shake it to open the dev menu. I'm not sure like why I cannot do it here with command D. No, yeah, if I, if I do it multiple times, it actually opens. So you would be able to toggle the performance monitor to, to debug it and so on. So all the good stuff from Expo with the benefits of running any kind of native code. All right, so uh, that was a little bit of explanation of how to um, do custom development builds with Expo. And now we are ready to interact with our React Native Health package uh, based on the documentation and interact with it with full capabilities. Uh, the first step, we've, we have to initialize the health kit. We need to initialize the health kit with some permissions. So let's go ahead and when will we have to do that? We will do that in a use effect because we want to initialize the permission as soon as the application opens, right? So we don't need VCs available at the moment. We can go ahead and do um, Apple health kit dot init health kit. Here we need to provide permissions and these permissions, let's define them at the top, const permissions, which is going to be of type something like permission, health permissions. So this is an object that has the read, right? No, it's an object that has a property permissions. Wait a second. Health kit permission. Yeah, it's not health permission, but health kit permissions. And now we're gonna have permissions. Permission is an object with a read. 
permissions and write permissions. Is it imported correctly? Health kit permissions from React Native Health Kit. Oh, permissions like this. That's good that we're using TypeScript because it allows us to see these errors right away. I was having permission and that's why it wouldn't work because it needs permissions. So for the read permissions, we're gonna get it from our constants permissions. So there is this Apple health kit dot constants dot permissions and here we have some permissions there is a lot of health permissions that you can um, access and the one that you're gonna the permission that you need depends on the features that you uh, you want your application to have and the data that you need to access this is like when it comes to health like it's a pretty um let's say, um, how is it called? But yeah, focus. <laughs> when it comes to health, like the data, uh, we take it very seriously. So you need to be very granular and very specific about what exactly you want to, to ask. For example, what we want is here is step or steps. Yes, let's go with the steps. We don't need any write permission at the moment, so we're gonna leave it empty. By the way, this project, like we're gonna only sh implement the steps counter, but with the same approach, like you can get access to any kind of data. And I'm gonna show you in the documentation how you can navigate, how you can ask permissions and how you can uh, request the data that you need. That can be like a lot of um, things. For example, you can get like the body methods like height, weight, and so on. Temperature, body fat percentage, uh, like uh, everything about the diet, the fitness methods uh, for the steps and so on. Uh, Nutrition, mindful minutes and so on. Sleep methods. So for example, if you're building uh, mindfulness application, you would be interested in uh, using the safe mindful sessions. So if your user is using your application for 10 minutes to do some mindfulness exercises, you can call this safe mindful session to basically record the data about this uh, inside the Apple Health. And the user will see it right inside the Apple Health uh, project. Hey, Andrew, how are you doing? Very sensitive topic, thank you very much. My brain is fried. Um, so what I wanted to, to do now, what I wanted to do, let's move a bit faster because I'm going too in depth. So let's import the use effect from React. Uh, in it health kit, we need to send the permissions here. And uh, the second parameter is a callback function that can give an error, right? So we can check if there, there was an error. We can, I don't know. Let's simply console log it. And otherwise, like if we return here, that means that at this moment, you can request uh, data. You have permissions to request data. So there is, but one way would be to actually call like the functions to get data here, but it will nest, like it will have, it will, Vadim, <laughs> focus. Our code will become um, really unreadable when we will put everything into the same use effect. So I would rather save the state of our permissions, like if we have permissions or not, I will save that data into a state variable. Uh, 
initially use state from React. Initially, we're not gonna have permissions and only after we initialize HealthKit with our permission and if we don't have any errors, that means that we can set permissions to true. Now, that's it. Like that's everything about initializing. In the next steps, what we can do is we can define our use effects that will be responsible of requesting data that we need. Um, but we're gonna do that in a moment because right now we see that it automatically, our application is already asking us for the steps permissions. If I'm gonna reload, it automatically opens it up and we have to manually turn it on and allow. Uh, there was a problem. Reload, perfect. <clears throat> now the second time, if I'm gonna refresh, I'm not sure why if I do if I press double R to restart it, it crashes. So to reload, I'm, I will have to press R in our terminal and that will reload the application. So the second time we already see that it has permission and it doesn't ask, ask us again. If a user in the first, the first time you, uh, you are asking the permission for, for some health data, if a user doesn't give you permission for that, you're not gonna be able to ask it again programmatically. Basically, you're gonna be able to ask it, but it will not open up that um, automatic window to, to request it. It will just say that you don't have permission to that. So in that case, you what you have to do is to inform the user that he has to go manually in the health application and manually go ahead and give a permission that you're requesting from the health application. That's just something to keep, keep in mind. Uh, right, so now that we have permissions, we can go ahead and get some data. Let's define a new use effect that will be triggered every time our permissions, or not permission, but has permission changes. And we're gonna check if it still doesn't have permission, don't do anything because it will be triggered the first time and it will be triggered when has permission becomes true. And here it's already safe to interact with HealthKit because we know that we have permissions. The function that we're gonna use are somewhere from the fitness methods. For example, there is this get step count that will uh, aggregate the total steps for a specific day, starting and ending at midnight. Perfect, let's try that. So what we need? We need Apple, we need some options. Okay, and then get steps count, options, and then error and result. Okay, so we need some options, const options. The type of these options will be health input options. Health input options imported from React Native Health. Let's define these options. And what information? Data and include manual added. So date will be New date, that's gonna be basically today. To ISO string. Let's call this function. So we're requesting for the data for today. And let's do include manually added false. Now with these options, we can call apple health kit dot uh, get How's it called? Step count. We're gonna send the options here and we are going to receive, uh, we're go the second parameter is a callback function that will have an error and the results. Again, if something happens, the error will be defined. So we can at the moment simply console log error getting the steps. 
But if it doesn't, we can console log the result. So let's see if the, what result do we get. So if I'm gonna restart our application, there was a problem. Develop and build encounter the following. Wait a sec. Get step counter should work. And the result is it has a start date, it has an end date, and it has the value. This value is what we are interested in. So result resulted value is going to be the step counter, step count for today. So what we can do is we can save it into a state variable. Use state zero. So let's first of all display it in the UI here as the steps value steps to string, we see zero. Let's display it for the ring progress, where the progress is going to be our number of steps over the goal. What would be the goal? I don't know. Let's define it as a variable. Steps, goal. I think the recommended one is 10,000. So steps divided by steps goal. Okay, now it's zero. And lastly, we need to set the steps with a value that we receive from the get step function. So set steps with results dot value. It's still zero because the emulator doesn't have this fitness data. But I have my phone here and let's go ahead and try to build it for my phone. I'm gonna open a new terminal and let's go ahead and do npx expo run iOS dash D in order to select the device that we want to run to. I have my device connected to uh, the computer so I can select it from this list. This is my device and it will build and run it directly on my device and we're gonna see uh, the, the data there. Ask all permission is the way. <laughs> yes, exactly. So we're gonna wait for for the build to 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 to, to be created. Should take one or two minutes. I miss all, all days in Android when you can get permissions to control their phone and all devices in home without asking for it. <laughs> that is fun. Privacy. <laughs> the Sphere developer. Hey, Vadim, your channel is the only one but most useful for React Native. I am new here. Hey, welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, by the way. If you enjoy what we are doing here, we are doing project-based tutorials every single Friday live here. So if you enjoy them, make sure to subscribe not to miss the future ones. Because we have a rule actually, I forgot to mention about it. Guys, where is it? This one. We have a problem, you know? And the problem is that 99% of you that are watching this video are not subscribed to the channel. And I know this from analytics, it's even worse right now. So if you are part of a 1% club, make sure to click the red button below and comment down, I'm part of 1% club. You are elite. My camera is freezing a bit. I'm just running in 20 FPS. Uh, so I have an um, application running on the device. What I need to do is, uh, I'm gonna get rid of my emulator here. I want to show you the actual device. So many things. Here is exactly what I see on my device. 
And we need to, from the development server here, let's do, let's press on I to open it on iOS. Or maybe press fetch development servers. Um, let's try to run the development server again. NPM, NPM start. I need npm start. And from here, let's press fetch development servers. Will it find? No, let's press I. And it opens on the IO iPhone. iPhone. Uh, Why it doesn't appear here? Should be. I'm too lazy to enter the URL manually. Whoa, actually, now that our custom development build is installed on our application, I can simply open up the camera and open this here, allow, and that's it. I forgot about it. Reload, and here we have it. Now it asks us on my physical device to give access to the steps, let's allow, and got it. Let's close it. And I've done 239 steps today. That's what it means to prepare a live stream. Let's see if that's uh, actually true. Yes, that's actually true, guys. <laughs> 239 steps. Come on, like this part didn't even move. Um, maybe we can do 2023 month number. It's month number six, but I think it should be five <laughs> in, the, in, in the constructor here. And the date, maybe 15. Okay, if it's six, it's zero. If, yeah, because six is July <laughs> for JavaScript dates. This is yesterday. Yeah, we, we see that it's working. 16, 14, a bit better. Oh, even better. Uh, I'm just gonna look at all my data here. Oh, I almost did the, the norm there. That's sad. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was looking for. <clears throat> um, so, that's how we get data automatically from the health kit. And it's also nicely animated. Uh, we should also try to give the other data, maybe distance. Will that work or should we calculate it on our end? Get daily distance walking running samples. Hmm. Get flights climbed, that's something that we need. And we simply call the same function the, with the same properties. So I'm just gonna copy paste this code and I'm gonna get flights climbed. The same options for the same date uh, and here, set, I need another state variable for our flights. Can anyone explain what does flights mean in this context? <laughs> Why is it flights climbed? 
explain for a dummy like me. So here, when we request them, we set flights like this, and where we display them, it should be this one. Cannot read property value of undefined results here. Error getting steps, but what error? Uh, I think with these errors, we need to return here. But what's the problem? Uh, let's also console log the error itself. Maybe not the right parameters. Error getting steps, code, apple, domain, apple. The operation could be completed. I think I didn't ask for the permission. Steps. Let's do. I'm going to destructure the permission not to have to write them again and again. What? Okay, 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 okay. Let's just see if the problem is with the permission by adding a new one here, dot flights. Yeah, that's a separate permission. So I need to give it as well. Allow. Okay. We get this data as well. And lastly is the distance. So for the distance, for the distance here we have get daily distance walking, but get distance walking and running, that basically will be the total distance. The only difference here is that we need to add some uh, the unit mile and get distance walking running. Okay, so again, we need another Apple Health Kit call. Why didn't we do uh, the API as a sync await? I really don't like these callbacks functions. So get distance walking running. And inside the options, I think we can add here unit health unit. What health unit do you want? Health unit. meter health unit dot meter and let's go ahead and do const distance set this equal use state zero and 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 for the get distance we're gonna set distance here and where we display it let's go ahead and dynamically display it here 
by taking the distance, which is in meters. And I think we have to divide it by 1000. And then like in order not to get a lot of digits after the zero, we can do two fixed two. And it will display only two digits after the um, Cannot read property <laughs> health unit. Oh, the default is meter, so I can exclude it. And it should give me an error because we didn't ask for permission. So let's add one more permission here for the distance walking running. I need to give it allow and refresh. 1.3 kilometers. If we compare it with the fitness for yesterday, is it for yesterday? Let's do it for today. How shameful it is, but let's do it for today. Where is it? Where, where, where? Here, 16th. to 239 and 0 0.15. Yes, yes, exactly. Perfect, multiply, what multiply? If it's in meters and we have to render them as kilo kil kilometers, we need to divide, right? Okay, so that's how you slowly and slowly g uh, get access to more data, depending on the requirements of your application. Um, what I want to do right now before doing anything else, I really don't like how everything is getting already out of a control here. Like it's a lot of logic of interacting with Apple Health Kit. I think that like from the perspective of our application, our application doesn't really care where we get this data. The application itself only cares about like, hey, how many steps, how many flights and how much distance. So I'm thinking of adding a custom hook that will do all of the, all of the, all of the logic with uh, related to the Apple Health Kit. And then we're just gonna use that logic to get access to the steps and so on. So in the source, let's go ahead and create a new folder here uh, hooks, let's create um, a hook called use health data dot uh, use health data equal to a function. Uh, and everything like getting them, basically we're gonna copy everything except from the return, like everything related to the permissions, steps, flights, and so on. Let's copy to that uh, part. Let's copy it like this and copy to the use health data. We will need the import statements and also the permissions. Here as well. And uh, we need to return them, right? Uh, let me just check the structure. Yeah, we need just to simply return that value. So at the end, that's what data we're gonna export from the hook. So we want to export the steps, flights, and distance. Steps, flights, and distance. Now, using this hook 
where that we will export by default here export default use health data in our app.tsx we can get access to use health data and we will get uh, access to the steps to the flights and to the distance and just like that our application now simply uses a custom hook that does all the heavy logic of getting this data and here we just receive the data and render it on the screen so our app.tsx is much more clean at the moment and all the low level interaction of apple apple health kit we abstracted and put put it here <clears throat> maybe this data, maybe this date should be a variable that we will send to the use health data. We can do that. And if we, for example, we will take it from here and send it from, maybe without the two string, let's just send a pure data, date um, value inside our custom hook use health data. We're gonna receive it here, date, like this as date. We can use it here inside the options. So if I'm gonna change it from 215, yes, it works. So now we've simply using this hook, sending the data that we want to, uh, to request for, we can get all of the information. Uh, Ashish Deke is asking a very important question. It looks like you are working uh, for our team, but it doesn't. So I'm pretty excited to, to talk more about that. Uh, Ashish is asking, please tell, about, tell us more about your premium course. So what are you, what are you interested in? Our premier course is for people that have went through a couple of projects here on YouTube that are already a bit familiar with how everything works with React Native and are ready to get to the next level when it comes to building full stack end-to-end -end mobile applications. The course like really goes into depth. Um, it covers so much more than you see here on YouTube. On YouTube, I'm limited by time. I cannot go here like for eight hours uh, straight. In the course, I have all the time that I, we, we have, and also we are editing the videos in order to, for you to have the best experience possible in learning a condensed way and getting better at building mobile applications. So it covers both a front end using React Native, how to build beautiful user interfaces, and also the backend using AWS Amplify on how to build scalable and secure backend infrastructure for your application. We have modules for all the parts that are related to the backend. Let's say we have a full module on APIs that has more than 12 uh, lessons there. We have a module about storage, module about uh, some more advanced techniques like a feed and following system, uh, also, notifications, what else? Production, preparing everything for production. That was a big one where we um, create an automatic CI CD pipeline that every time you do some changes in your code, you simply push it to your GitHub account and the pipeline that we are building there will take it from there, will deploy the backend, will build the application, will submit it to App Store. So it's really like you are only focusing on coding and all of the changes are automatically deployed to, uh, to the stores and in the hands of your users. So I can talk a lot about that, um, but if you're interested to learn more, you can go to academy.nojos.dev. The link is in the description below and learn more there. All right, so yeah, we have, uh, I think we crossed 
more than 500 uh, students at the academy, which is really exciting. We also have weekly uh, group coaching sessions, which are some of the students say that these are the most powerful thing that they get out of a course to, to go through some problems or to go through some um, things together as a group every Monday. Uh, it's really interesting. Need to commit. Thank you very much. Uh, so yeah, thank you all for asking. If you're interested, all the details is you can find at academy.notjust.dev. But for now, I think uh, I will have to commit. Apple Health Kit integration. And I think we're good here. Uh, when is the how to build WhatsApp for Vision Pro? <laughs> that's that's interesting. Like I like when when they announced it, I was thinking like, hmm, can you run React Native here? Vivaldo is also an academy student and also part of a one percent club. Good job. Proud of you guys. I'm quite excited if we will be able to use React Native for Vision Pro. I'm pretty sure we will. Like it's not gonna be like uh, right from the beginning, but I'm sure it will be. Hi, I recently discovered your channel. Your content is very helpful. Please create content for a long time. I'm from Mexico and in Spanish not exist React Native content like yours. Should I do it in Spanish? Uh, hola, me llamo Vadim. Yo soy un uh, programador. Um, that's it. <laughs> Yo vivo en uh, España, pero no hablo español muy bien. Yo solo um, estudiar español uh, con Duolingo. Y Duolingo no, no es una... Solution per perfect. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop. All right, so we have a lot of things here. Um, look, shall we give it a try to integrate it with Android as well? I, I haven't tried it to be honest, so I, I'm not sure, like it's a bit um, risky to go into that direction. Because it might take <laughs> two hours just to, to get it working. And another thing is that I'm not sure if I have an Android device. But maybe Android has some kind of. Does anyone know if Android emulator emulates this data? Back to HealthKit. Uh, so, what do you say, guys? Should we go into Android as well? The Health Connect needs to be installed on the user device. <coughs> Sorry. However, the goal is to have this application pre-installed on Android devices in future. Health Connect API requires, okay. is initialized. Alternatives for iOS. <laughs>
<laughs> your Spanish is good, uh, to be honest, to be learned on Duolingo. Yeah, I have. Um, I have quite a lot of streaks on Duolingo, but it's so bad. Like I really want to 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 learn it, but I don't have time. Like I have four hundred forty two days streak. <clears throat> but yeah, there is no, we don't have time. It's only, it's not the priority right now. Oh, I'm a bit afraid to get into it, uh, but Let's just try. Let's try. If I'm too tired, we're going to stop. But let's go ahead and we have to run our application on Android emulator. I don't have a physical device right now. So let's try to do npm run Android and let's see what's going on there. npm run Android. What would you like your Android package to be named? Yes, that's cool. Maybe I should look for a device. Give me just one second until everything is building here. All right, I found the device. Not sure <laughs> how alive it is. But I also have an emulator. So it said that it needs the health. Mm, I need to sign in, right? Hmm, that's gonna be tough. Give me just one second to remember my password. Security code, where? Hmm. Oh, 
Ok, ok. So at the moment, the emulator is doing something. I'm setting up it, the emulator. Okay, I got to Google Play. Now I have to search for health. Is it Google Fit? No, it's not Google Fit. Health Connect, beta. Are we still in beta? Yeah, I think it's this one. Let's install it. The application is still building, come on. <coughs> so guys, any questions about this application, about anything else, until I wait for this to install in? build Just join. Did you publish it? Um, just join. No, basically what we are doing is we are building the, uh, the fitness application that will display the number of steps. We have done that integration already for the iOS. So the application is working. I disconnected my phone, but you can see it here. Like everything is taken uh, dynamically from the Apple Health Kit. And now what we're trying to do is we're trying to integrate it with um, Google, with um, Health Connect from, uh, for Android. And this way to have application, um, to be able to run this application both on iOS, that will pull the data from Apple uh, Health Kit and on Android that will get the data from Health Connect. And for, for the application to work like it, the device should have the Health Connect application installed. And as I read, um, the Health Connect is going to be pre-installed on all the devices going forward. I think it's still in beta, but later they are trying to do like a central hub for all the health data, similar to how iOS is doing. Uh, regarding the React Native app using charts, uh, I think we have something. Lucas did um, the project with crypto price tracker that was done by Lucas, included some charts. Maybe we can do something like that as well, again.
Why it takes so long? It says pending here. Like, what's going on? Is there a page where we can see the downloads? I'm really not sure if it's actually doing something, downloading or installing this Health Connect application where it's just stopped. Anyone has any ideas? But let's wait. We can wait. It's already 10 minutes building application and Vamos. Activity, run tracker, what else? It doesn't have <laughs> the best <laughs> ratings. But it's great, but it doesn't work or sync. I think like the problem is that it's still new and the application have to 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 basically connect to it. Oh, oh, pending. Why, why it takes so long? Is it because of this one? What do you think? Or I should just wait? Getting the phone ready. 
Maybe my physical device. <laughs> but it's doesn't have any battery. I'm gonna run to search for a new Android device. I'm gonna be back in one minute. Found it. Nope. So if in 10 minutes we don't have any success with this one, we're gonna call it a day. Uh, you can use Let's View as a mirroring software. Yeah, but the thing is that all of my Android devices are dead, uh, so I'm just trying to. Uh, there is some progress with Android emulator. Skip, skip. No thanks. And this one? Come on. Oh, yes, now it's downloading. Perfect, okay, there is some progress with emulator. Let's open up this health. <laughs> you need to set a lock screen. Give me just one second. Okay, so get started with Health Connect. Store cell health and fitness data, giving you a simple way to sync with different apps on your phone. Get started. No apps recently access Health Connect. Okay, that's good. But yeah, let's give it a try and see if from our application, we're gonna be able to do that. First of all, um, we have an error here on the, on the Android device on the Android emulator, because we are trying to call some functions from Apple Health Kit that are not available here. So in order to make sure that we are only calling Apple Health Kit on uh, devices that support it, I think in this use effect, what we can do is we can check if, before initializing it, we can check if Apple Health Kit dot is available. Is it? Not a function. Uh, yeah, if it's available. It needs some, uh, can we be tested for? Oh, really? You need to, <laughs> okay, okay. Let's go back to Apple Health Kit. Where is it? Uh, React Native Health Connect, no, this one, Health Kit, and let's look at the is available function. Is available, error, available. So it shouldn't be, 
a if statement. It should be simply a function call where we will get the error and the available. Here we can check if error we can say error checking availability uh, return then if it's not available let's say console log uh, apple health not available and also return otherwise we can initialize apple health kit so i will copy everything from here put it there and is not a function I think even this function will uh, will fail. Probably we have to do it with ourselves using platform from React Native. So in this use effect, let's check if platform OS is not iOS, then return. Basically, don't do anything. And it's good that we added this uh, this feature is available because. Even some iOS devices might not uh, have an Apple Health Kit. So that's why we have both of them. So basically all of our, all of these steps, like with checking the platform, checking if it's available or not, all of them will prevent Apple to initialize. And if the per permissions are never set to true, the other functions uh, that will request data from Apple Health Kit will not be uh, will not be called because we have this gate here. So basically it will say that it doesn't have permission on Android. Now, let's go ahead and we are going to start. Um, let me actually commit this. Um, okay, and now let's go ahead and uh, get started with uh, React Native Health Connect. So what do we have to do here? We have to first of all install the React Native Health Connect. So let's copy the name of the package and let's install it using X, npx expo install rec native health connect i'm not even sure it's, it will have a config plugin for expo So for uh, React Native Health, which is for Apple, it has this app.plugin, which makes it um, compatible with Expo. Let's see if this one has, because if it doesn't, we would have to create it ourselves. I think it doesn't, oh boy.
but maybe maybe it will work i don't know so we install the library what we have to do right now is we have to run it again build and run it again so let's do npm run android So await initialize, request permission. Let's um, let's work with what we have here. Should I do it in the same file? Maybe, yeah. Let's have a function read sample data with this example. Basically, this is iOS health kit. And let's go down, say, Android health connect. We have a function and in a use effect, let's check if the platform is Android dot OS is if it's not Android, I would like to stop here, return. Otherwise let's call get, how is it called this function? read sample data let's do console log result uh, what do we have okay there was an oh minimum SDK 21 cannot be smaller than um, Where did I see that error? I've lost it. Version 26 declare in the library health connect. So we need to increase the minimum SDK uh, to 26. With build properties. Yes, so using this expo build properties, we're gonna be able to um, change the Android configuration and increase the, uh, the, the target SDK. So let's go ahead and install it. npx expo install expo build properties and inside app.json, we can use the expo build properties with Android to change this. Okay, so inside inside app.json, we have plugins here. Let's go ahead and add a new plugin, but uh, in this case, we will add it as a tuple, uh, as an array of two val values. The first one is the name of is the name, which is Expo Build Properties Expo build properties and the second one is an object is an object with configuration for example android we want to to increase what what is the error 
target SDK. So the target Let's do which one? 26. Let's try 26. And now if I'm gonna do npx exponents tall. No, 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 not this one. We already did that. npm run Android to build again the project for Android. But this time with build properties, we change the target of the Android version and it still doesn't work. Compile SDK is not specified. Mm, maybe we need all of them. Let's target 31 like this, simply. Let's try again. Would React Native Maps work uh, for routes? Uh, yeah, I think it should work. Uh, can minimum SDK version. Does it have a... Oh no, I was so excited. Mean SDK version. Let's check here, mean. Mean SDK version number. But that's what I did mean. Oh, okay. Different capitalization. Okay, okay, okay. We're getting there. I'm pretty, I, I hope we will get there. I have a very destroyed phone here. <laughs> Let me prepare it as well. Meanwhile, but I see if build failed. Manifest merger mean SDK version can only be smaller than version 26. What's going on? If I do maybe Maybe if I do NPX, Expo, Pre-Build, Platform, Android, and I think Clean. Let's do Help here first. Uh, clean and Platform. So. platform, Android, and then dash dash clean. Proceed. So 
So now will it take 10 minutes again? Please, this is a step. This is a step. Please. No. <laughs> Thirty three or later. Oh, 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 oh. So we are on a good track. So we need thirty three or later. Let's do thirty three. And for minimum, let's do also thirty three. Do I need to do clean? the same error so I suspect that I need to do a clean again and a run Android this time it will work this time it will work and and let's go please I think it's more than previous time. Exiled all. I just got here. Are you done already with this application? Uh, no, well, this application is finished for iOS. So the fitness application is pulling data from the Apple Health Kit. Uh, now what we are trying to do is to make it compatible with Android as well by integrating it with the Android Health Connect. So that's at the step where we are at the moment. But for iOS, it works. It pulls data correctly from your device. The circle is automated, is animated. So it was a really interesting and valuable uh, tutorial. If you are interested, the video is going to be published on the channel, so you can rewatch it afterwards. All right. How confident are we that it's gonna work? I'm at 50-50 at this moment. Not gonna be surprised if. But let's see, let's see. So I said that I'm gonna prepare my physical device as well, maybe. Because I'm not sure if we're, oh no. Fail to install older. Oh, don't tell me that, oh my God. I think my uh, emulator is uh, Android SDK 31, but I need Android SDK 33. So installing it will take so much time. Going through all of these steps again. I'm not sure. Yeah, this is API 31. So I'm gonna want a different one. I would have to or maybe this one. It's gonna take some some time. Your device is not forty three, yes.
But my physical device, I'm pretty sure it's not. Are we actually dependent on the, this version? Uh, React Native. Help Connect API requires minimum SDK 26. So what's the problem then? Why, um, why it didn't work when we had here minimum SDK 26? Tr shall we try it this way? Because it, it says minimum SDK 26. Uh, I have to select se the one that has Play Store. That's true. But where do I see if it has Play Store or not? Does this one has Play Store? I think so. Okay, I'm gonna do a lot of things on the side just to see w which one works. So first of all, uh, what we are trying right now is to try it again with minimum SDK 26 to see if the existing emulator will work. Uh, because it's supposed to. Otherwise, on the side, I'm preparing the, a, newer ver a newer emulator with Android version 33. Um, it still will take a bit of time to for me to log in and play. And it doesn't have play. Or does it? All right, yeah, I made a mistake. Okay, no worries. Uh, the Play Store depends on the device that you choose. So which one should I choose? A Nexus? And with, it's a different one? I just downloaded it. What's going on here? <laughs> I'm happy that at least my PC is holding up with so many emulators running build at the same time. Android Studio, um, like streaming software, so many browser windows. <laughs> Build successful. Build successful, guys. Opening up. Really? Possible and handle. Android permission health read active is not declared. But it's already good. So I think I can close all my Android Studio stuff. And look into the, our code for the use health data, where we have what? Request permission. Where 
Where is it coming from? It's not declared. So I'm going to active cal. Maybe, hmm. Oh, there is some documentation. So let's see, let's see. Is initialized permissions. permissions let's look at those to access health data from the health connect application in your application you need to add the necessary permission and filters to the app manifest android manifest xml permission read read and so on So setting up expo permissions. Oh, let's go. You will need EAS and config plugins. Edit up the JSON and add Android permissions. Uh, let's do that. Expo Android permissions. Expo application. Uh, we somewhere have here Android and we need to define permissions. So which one are we interested in? Read steps. I don't need write steps. I don't need, let's see what other permissions there are. Uh, so probably flight we will not have. Sexual activity, damn boy. There is such data here. Um, Floors climbed, Pff, let's go. Uh, so the name is this one. Let's add it here. And the distance, right? Distance. And of course, distance. And because we are changing on the native side, uh, we will have to rebuild it again. NPM run Android to include the newly added permissions in the Android manifest file. Let's see if we don't have to do anything else, setting up permissions and creating a config plugin to insert a new intent filter. Add a new file in your project root Android manifest plugin why aren't you adding it on your end? Why do I have to copy paste it in my application? Okay, let's uh, let's do this as well. We need to do it. We need to, but it's good that they provi they're providing the code for the config plugin. So in our root folder, let's create a new Android manifest plugin. And let's copy paste this code here. Okay. And then we have to edit up the JSON again and add this plugins, this one. Yeah, above the uh, expo build properties. So up the JSON plugins. Uh, Why expo build properties is twice. I don't need it twice. I will delete it once and I will add here the Android manifest plugin. Android manifest and that's it. Uh, 
and let's fire a new build guys i'm pretty excited i think it's gonna work i i'm pretty sure it's gonna work Come on, high hopes. <clears throat> Actually, not exactly sure how. Hmm. So it's still building. I'm trying to connect. Um, on my device as well. What's going on here? Does Android have like a step counter? Building complete. Oh, so it's running. Yes, it's running. And in use health data, if I am calling this one, it shouldn't be active calories burned because what we are requesting is steps. Simply steps. What? Read steps is not defined. I just defined that. Read steps here in permissions. Don't tell me that I have to, 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 to most probably to clean it. So pre-build clean. and npm run android and let's go through the documentation a bit methods initialize request permissions active read Read records. Oh, look at this. Look what we have here. Our application is requesting permissions for the steps. Let's do allow, allow, and it's zero steps. 
No, the thing is that uh, we got an empty array here because what we are doing here is time range steps, start time. Let's do what, 0 0.6? It's still empty. Hmm. Between. Steps. What are we calling get read records? Read. Uh, read records. Maybe read record. No. Record type, example, active calories burned. Why is it with small active? And here is with capital active. And what about these options? Do you have documentations about them? <laughs> Troubleshooting page. <laughs> okay, what are we looking for? We're looking why we get an empty array. Time which you gave should be ESO format. What's the problem with this one? Is it the other way around? Let's look at the read records option. Time range filter, data origin ascending page, time range filter. Time range filter, operator between, after, before. Let's do after. And after has start time. Uh, dot zero. No, I think, I think there is simply no data about the steps there. Hmm. No, I'm trying to simulate some activity, but I think it's not gonna have it. Unless we write it.
What do you think, guys? Mm. What if we... Let's take access to the others as well. How they're called. Permissions. Distance, right? Distance. And floors climbed. Now, if I'm going to do the same for the other two, for example, distance and here, distance. And how is it called? Floors climbed. So we need to give permission for the distance. That's already good. Floors climbed allow. And it's still empty. Should we try to write maybe something? Is this one uh, correct? Zero six sixteen. Zero six sixteen. could not be parsed. Zero six sixteen as I said. Still empty. Mm. Where is this health kit? Why is not here? Yeah, the thing is that you don't have any data in Health Connect. How do we add data to Health Connect? Uh, 
I think we should download an application that would write there. As a companion developer tool to help you test your apps integration with Health Connect, it can read and write data directly to Health Connect. That's what I was looking for. Allowing you to test your application operation, you can download the APK, use it to, to for your test cycle. Let's try. So we have a zip. I think I found a solution. How, how it's called? Health Connect Toolbox? Where is it? Come on. And Health Connect Toolbox. Why you're not here? Let's try it from the terminal. ADB install downloads. Health It's showing where? Oh, wait a second. Allow the permissions. Display over applications. I don't know. Insert health record activity. Distance. Let's do duration distance. Two thousand. Save. 
and we need uh, permissions, allow, save, successfully inserted. What else do we need? We need steps. Uh, like this, save, steps, allow, save. Successful and uh, floor is climbed. Let's do five. Allow, save. Okay, now will our application have access to them? Come on, please, reload. Yes, yes, <laughs> so exciting. So, count, it gives us an array of things. Can it aggregate somehow? Because I think if we, for example, will include, it gives all the activities. For example, if I do steps, but not at 6 p.m., but in the morning, okay. And I will do 500, save. And uh, now my application will get, for example, for the steps count, one 500 and one 750. So what I will have to do to get the total number of steps, uh, const total steps equal to steps dot map, not even map, steps.reduce, because we want to calculate the sum, where current and uh, sum then current, we're gonna take sum plus current dot count, and we're gonna start from zero, console log total steps, let's do that like this, total steps. So total steps 8,000, yes, because we have 750 in the evening and 500 in the morning. So that's correct. Now, um, I think we just need to do beginning of today and end of today. How we're gonna do that? We have this date here. I can install some libraries for the date, but start. What's gonna be, I'm gonna console log less things. What if we console log date dot to ESO string? That value is going to be the date at the start of a day or not, or at the end of a day. So maybe I can just use this one here. And maybe I can extract it into a constant. Time range filter for to, to reuse it for all of them like this. So time range filter here. Okay, yeah, the type is time range filter. Hmm. 
Now I can do the same here to provide the same time range filter and for the floor climbs, climbed as well. So we have total steps. Let's go ahead and set it, set steps as total steps. We can do the same for the for the distance. Let's copy it like this. So total distance equal to distance dot reduce sum current dot the distance. dot in meters. Now here we set distance with total distance and let's do the same for the floors climbed. We're gonna need to calculate the total floors. We're gonna loop through the results and what are we gonna get? We're gonna get the floors. And let's set flights floors. Total floors. What is that? Okay. But it needs to be until the end of the day because look, uh, the date that it receives right now, if I do a console log uh, date, this date is 12, but today is 16. So what we are trying actually here to do is, oh, um, let's do JavaScript. Uh, Let's actually ask ChatGPT. I have a JavaScript JavaScript date. I need two dates representing the start of the day and the end of the day in ISO format. Uh, is it supposed to be set flights or set floor? It's supposed to be set flights because that's how we uh, called it. It's coming from Apple. Apple. It's just the naming. Maybe floors. Like I, I'm not sure like why on, on Apple it's flights, but okay. No, never mind. So uh, start of day, set hour. Okay, so we can do date set hour like this. Start time. Can I do it in line? Uh, 
it should be between and here it should have end time twenty three fifty nine fifty nine So it says zero, but if uh, from up.js I'm gonna send today's date, 16, yes, yes, yes. And if it's 15, it's zero, 17 also should be zero, and only 16 should have, yes, it works, guys. And it works both on iOS and on Android. Oh my God, it's so exciting. You know what, to make it, uh, yeah, 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 oh my God. I'm so happy that it works. I really did not expect this one to work. Let's see the last things if we're doing everything correctly. For example, here we're not checking if it's initialized or not. So let's do if is not initialized, let's simply return. Um, let's check if granted permission dot I don't want to check that <laughs> it will simply give an error later if it doesn't have permission maybe like uh, to, to do it properly maybe you'd have to do if For example, here, if uh, granted permission dot access, what? What does it return back? Request permission, how can we work with them? So if it's, uh, if the, um, if this one fulfills, that means that it has permissions, all of them that we asked. So I think we can safely delete it. Not delete it, but just request it and that's it. Maybe it needs actually some um, some checks with his request permissions here, but I'm not gonna do that right now. Let me go ahead and submit. Um, health connect integration for Android health data. The last thing that I wanted actually to do, which is a very little bonus, is to have this date somehow dynamic. And what I mean by that is to have it as a state, const uh, date set date. Let's initialize it with, let's initialize it with today. And let's use the date from this state inside our data here. Now, above a ring here, above a ring, what I want to do is let's add a view with a text uh, that will show the date dot to date string. The text should have some style.
let's go ahead and give it some style. I want to be able to uh, move between dates from the UI. Color. Look what Apple has. Uh, it's white. <laughs> Uh, view style styles dot date picker date picker let's go ahead and style it a bit I want the just to make sure that okay it's spans across the whole screen let's do a line items I don't know, center and margin, or let's do even padding. Align self flex start, what's gonna happen there? No, 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 no. It's okay like this. So date, maybe font weight. 500. Font size 20. Perfect. Let's add some um, icons. So expo icons. Are you still with me, guys? Oh my God, it's almost four hours. I thought that it's gonna be a one or two hour uh, thing, but which one? This one or this one? Let's do this one. So we're gonna have it here for the left, here for the right. We're gonna do white, uh, maybe not white, but let's do the green. Is it important? Definitely not. Do I want it to look pretty? Of course. And for the date picker, let's go ahead and put flex direction a row to put them in the same row. And justify content center. Yes. And for the date margin uh, horizontal, let's do 10, maybe even 20. I think 24 here is too much, so 20 will be okay. And maybe some align. Okay, 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 it's good. Now we have to implement the change date. Uh, So new date is going to be a new date with a value of a current date. Then let's do new uh, chat GPT to the help. <laughs> mm. Create a JS function that will receive the number of days can be negative. And then um, 
update the react state variable called date set date by moving it think it will understand here's an update date number of days current date create a copy set date current date plus number of days update the date by adding subtract the number of days set date will it work change date here on this one I'm gonna do on press let's do change date minus one and on the other one it should be plus one so if I move it if I press, yes, yes, it works. Moving to another month, will it work? Yes, baby. Oh my God, it works. And when we get here, it's actually filled. Whew. And we can keep it under uh, we can keep it under how many hours? Four hours. That's good. So what I want to do now is I want to have a short demo. Here is our Android emulator. Here is Here is our iPhone. <clears throat> All right, guys. So that was the build for today. We managed to do a lot. Uh, so what we have done today is we implemented a step counter replication in React Native by integrating directly with Apple Health Kit on iOS and with Google Health Connect on Android. Here you can see both applications running at the same time. One is running on my physical device in my hand here, which is on the left. We can move through uh, the dates and it should, it should update, come on. This one updates on iOS. Why are you not updating? Reload. So this one, the iOS device is displaying the actual data that is coming from my fitness application. So please don't judge that I only did 200 steps today because I actually prepared for this live stream. So if we move it like this, it doesn't actually work on iOS, why? because we didn't uh, reinstall it. But the thing is that on Android, we can move it and it will update it, will very nicely animate um, this ring to display the actual data that is coming from the uh, Google Health Kit. I hope you enjoyed this one. It was a long one, but uh, very exciting. It showed you how you can integrate with Apple, Ki Apple Health Kit and the Google Health Connect. And this, I hope will open the doors to a lot of possibilities for you because now you know how to interact with that data. 
In this tutorial, yes, we used only a subset, a very small subset of data for steps, distance, flight climbed, and so on. But the Apple Health, like go ahead and look at how much data you have access to and you can do a lot of things with that. You can create different applications that will target the health of the user. You can create like some applications that would do challenges with health data and so on. So I'm pretty excited about this build. If you enjoyed this, make sure to subscribe to the channel or let's do it another one. If you enjoyed this, make sure to check out the tutorial on our YouTube channel, not just .dev, you'll find it there. All right, guys, so that was a long one. Uh, thank you for joining. I wish you a very fun weekend. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to become a full stack mobile developer, definitely check out our academy at academy.notjust.dev. Uh, that was it for today. I will see you next Friday. We are going live every single Friday. And I don't have a voice already. That means that it's time to end this one. All right, bye-bye.